You have to build something. Um, most of developers, most of software engineers, especially beginners and new software engineers, misinterpreted and misunderstood. So I'm going to explain the GraphQL the most simplest possible way I can explain. Especially, I'm going to explain it through something you already know. So it will be easy to understand. Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of my channel. So today we are going to talk about something like a paradigm shift. We are going to talk about some new architecture pattern, some uh, new technology we can use on future implementations. And this will really help to grow your project or push your project to some uh, ordinary uh, designs to new way of a new technology or new pattern. Okay. So most of you here is coming from my microservice course, right? If you followed my microservice theory and practical video both, it's a free course like 25 plus uh, videos. If you followed all those, then I believe you're in the expert level of REST, right? So that means you know how REST works, you know uh, best practices, rules and deployment and the patterns, everything about the REST. Okay. So today, I'm going to talk, take you somewhere different than the rest, right? So if you go a little bit to the history, so we started web services, something called SOAP, right? So what a SOAP means, SOAP is a kind of a, a web service platform where that is where we, the journey began. And uh, SOAP is a little hard to implement. It's XML based and uh, it's contract, it has a contract, we still learn everything. It's, it's, it's not easy to understand and implement. So then year 2000, the guy called Roy uh, uh, wrote his PhD thesis and he introduced something called REST, right? So ever since then, especially REST and all the social media, Facebook and everyone, uh, since they released their web services, APIs using REST, the REST becomes so popular. So, but, Technology evolves, architecture pattern evolves, development strategies evolves, when everything evolves, does REST fit to everything? That is the that is a valid question we should answer. So 10 years ago, if your web page take like 15 seconds to load, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly normal. But today, if your web service take even uh, three, four seconds to load, that's kind of a slow. That is how user experience evolves, right? So as a developers, as a software engineers, as an architects, we should, we should handle that. We should deliver that user experience to the user if you want to do successful implementation. So that is the way our, this technology come and fit, which is GraphQL. What is a GraphQL? GraphQL is something um, most of developers, most of software engineers, especially beginners and New software engineers misinterpreted and misunderstood. So I'm going to explain the GraphQL the most simplest possible way I can explain. Especially, I'm going to explain it through something you already know. So it will be easy to understand. Number one, GraphQL is not a frame, uh, GraphQL is not a tool, GraphQL is not a server. So GraphQL is not something someone uh, produce and market for you. Graph, GraphQL is a specification, right? Keep in mind, it is a specification. Remember we learned this, JVM is a specification, JR is implementation. Likewise, GraphQL is a specification. In the GraphQL, QL is a query language, of course. The Graph, QL. QL is a query language which, you, which we use to query the graph. Right, so that's where GraphQL comes. So this is came from Facebook, but it is not something Facebook owned, or it is not something Facebook uh, proprietary to Facebook where you have to pay for them. It's nothing like that. GraphQL is a specification. It's like a SQL, right, or SQL, what you're using, right? So you have a data in a database. You have to use a SQL query to take the data out, right? So SQL is a specification. How SQL used in uh, MySQL, MSQL, uh, and Oracle is very different, right? So, but it's the same SQL. Same wise, GraphQL is a specification. 
So if you want to use a GraphQL, you need to find an implementation of that, right? So that is the where the beauty comes, right? So you need to learn the GraphQL, but you need to find implementation to work with it. So the most developers goes wrong because they started to learn the GraphQL through implementation. So to make it simple, usually specification says what to be done, right? Implementation says, implementation says how to be how how it works, right? How it implemented, right? Uh, how we did it, right? So to be done, how what to be done to how we did it, right? Is a two different. So if you start to learn something from implementation, how they have done it then you think that is the way, that is the right uh, thing to do, or that is the way it works. No, it is not, right? So what implementation says, how they have done it, right? But specification is the place where you should go and learn. So let's try to learn GraphQL from something you already know, right? So you know web servers. If you are Apache or if you're coming from um, uh, .NET background, IIS or something like that, web servers, right? So let's say you download Apache and you, uh, or Nginx or whatever web server, then you start it. Can you see a website? No, you won't see a website because you just have a running Apache server, running web server. So you should produce the content. You should give the HTML content. Now web server knows, read your HTML file. HTML is a text file, right? So read your text-based, ASCII-based uh, HTML file and convert into web page and show it to user, right? The web server knows that technology. Web server has that technology. So, GraphQL is same. You can run a GraphQL server. That doesn't mean it has the data. It doesn't carry the data. You should give the data to GraphQL so that GraphQL can uh, show it to user. That's how GraphQL works, right? So a lot of uh, engineers has a misconception saying if I spawn a GraphQL server that has the data, no, that don't have a data. You should connect a data source to GraphQL server so they can show it. It's the same as you have a web server, you have to produce the web content to show it. Okay, that's the first principle. So why we need this technology? Okay, take this scenario, right? So you have employee service, you have employee table and you have a project table, right? So uh, employee and project, employee has project, so they link together. So if you want to produce this content through an API, you need to run an employee service, right? And probably you may have a project service and user may have, front-end front -end may have a requirement to fetch the employee along with the projects they're working on, right? So you need to write an endpoint for employee, get employee, and you need to write other endpoint to pass the employee ID and get projects. Right, so you need to at least run uh, two different uh, endpoints. So now, let's say employee object has uh, 50 fields, right? So some UIs need five fields, some UI needs 10 fields, some UI need 15 fields, something like that, right? So if that is the case, you need to implement like a uh, few DTOs and few other endpoints. Let's say to deliver your requirement, you have to have five endpoints, okay? With the GraphQL, you can do that with a one single endpoint, right? You implement what in the, in the rest world, you may implement five endpoints, but in the GraphQL world, you implement only one endpoint. That endpoint can uh, do your job, right? So it can, developer can select what are the, uh, what they need, and also they can uh, select what are the fields they need. Right? You don't have to write separate endpoint for their requirement. So that is a one benefit of using GraphQL. And also, let's say, go back to the previous scenario again, right? You need to get the employees and you need to get the projects for those employees, right? So you need to use multiple trips to server, get your data, right? For the relational data queries, you need to go to one, a few trips to server or else you need to have implement something like a proxy service and the proxy service will need to talk to multiple services and get those data to you, right? But in the GraphQL world, GraphQL can do this with a one trip, right? You don't have to go multiple trip to server, even to fetch the relational data, even to get the employees and the, the projects belongs to employees, you, they can take it by one trip without going 
multiple trips. So that's other beauty of GraphQL. So it means simply GraphQL will give you what you ask, right? So you don't have to take what they give to you. For example, in the REST service, you, uh, you have to take what they give to you. But in the GraphQL, you can ask what you want and take it from the server, right? And other thing is, for example, in a SOAP, we had something called WSDL or WSDL file where you can understand the service. But in the REST world, we don't have a such uh, implementation. You have to document the REST service, right? Uh, but in the GraphQL, you have some concept called schema. So with the schema, you can see what you're getting and from that you can ask what you want. For example, if a schema exposed like 20 fields, you can say, no, 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 I need only five fields. Five, these five fields is enough for me. For the other UI, they may need 10 fields. For other UI, they may need 15 fields. If you have 50 fields exposed, whoever wants what, they can take it. So with the GraphQL implementation, so now you will understand there are two parts, right? One is who giving the data, which is called GraphQL server. The other side is who's taking the data, which is a GraphQL client, right? So I, as I said before, GraphQL is not a tool, so you need to find implementation, right? So you can go with whatever the implementation you prefer. I personally prefer Apollo Server, but I have no affiliation with Apollo Server. Uh, it's personal to me, so I prefer that and I use it. But there is no reason you to use the Apollo Server or any other server. You can, you can uh, try multiple servers you have and you can uh, use it, right? For example, um, if you're looking for a GraphQL implementation for JavaScript, you can go with uh, GraphQL JS and you can go with the uh, Apollo server or you can go with the uh, Express GraphQL and there are multiple implementations like that, right? So you can go with whatever implementation you want. And client side also same, right? Client side, you have a Relay, which is the Facebook official uh, GraphQL client. And also you can you have a Apollo client, right? You can you can use a, uh, choose a client the way you want and what you prefer, right? Personally, I use Apollo server and Apollo uh, client, but I had no affiliation with them to promote them. I just said because it's a nice and it's, I have a good documentation and it has all the features I was expected so far. So I'm, I'm going with that. So let me explain how GraphQL work in a very simple way, right? So in a GraphQL, I told you GraphQL server, but server don't have a data, right? Server is just a facilitator like a web server, right? So web server facilitate to produce the HTML content to you as a website and the GraphQL server is uh, facilitate to produce the data as a graph to end users, right? So how we do this? First, we need to write something called a type, right? What are the type of queries uh, this GraphQL server expose? For example, in our uh, uh, scenario what we discussed before, we may have a type called uh, employees, right? Other one may be em find employee by ID, uh, find employee by ID with projects, uh, employees with projects, we may have a kind of a four types, right? So out of these four types, we are exposing employee as well as a project, right? So then we need to define these types, we need to explain this, right? So what is the employee, what other field it has, ID, first name, last name, telephone number, whatever. And what's the project type, like project name, project ID, uh, start date, end date, and so on and so forth, right? So then we can build relationship within this. We can extend this and build a relationship like employee has a project or project has employee, right? Same thing what you did in uh, Hibernate or uh, Spring Data JPA. It's a similar concept. You can build relationship with those. And to get the data, you need to write something called resolvers, right? So resolvers is the place it tells you how this data has to expose into the uh, expose to the client, right? And also the missing piece, you need to give a data source, right? Where are these data coming from, right? The beauty of GraphQL server is this: let's say you are uh, the client asking employee with projects, right? So employee may coming from a database table. The projects may coming from other REST service or other GraphQL service, right? So the beauty of this, you can get the single request, you can take the data from uh, database, employee data from the database, and take the project data from uh, other REST service as well, right? And return it to uh, consumer, right? So because then, but as a consumer, as the front-end developer, he will just see, 
I'm getting employees and a project from a GraphQL server. But GraphQL actually is taking from a databases and the rest, right? And can be static files and static data sources and multiple, right? So also the GraphQL server can talk to other GraphQL server, right? So which we call as a GraphQL federation. It's a, it's a huge uh, new topic. So you can use a GraphQL gateways as a federations, right? So let's say you need employee information and finance information, right? You can take the employee information from the employee GraphQL server and finance information from the finance GraphQL server, right? But uh, combining those two, federating those two, you can expose single URL to uh, wh whoever you are uh, developing your front end. This is a really nice, cool thing, right? So I'm not going to uh, make this video uh, so lengthy and explain everything, but if you're interested to learn GraphQL, if you need to see some practical, if you need to see how to implement, and if you need to see how we can federate, and if you want to see how uh, we can expose the data and com with comparing with the rest services, either just comment below or either uh, talk to me through my Instagram or uh, uh, Facebook, and um, I will do some videos for you to teach you GraphQL in the most simplest possible way. So if you interest, I'll take it. If not, let it go. And But stay safe, take care. Until we see you again in another video, make sure you subscribe.